Right, this is grade two, module five, lesson one. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about ten more, ten less, hundred more, hundred less. And we're going to be relating that to addition and subtraction. The idea being, we want students to have this number sense that they understand uh, well before we finally teach them the standard algorithm for addition and subtraction. So this lesson is is to that point where we're kind of helping students understand just the basics of 10 more uh, or 10 less, 100 more, and 100 less. The idea would be, so let's say we've got a place value chart right here, and oh, let's say we want to model the number 153. Okay, so if we wanted to model 153, we would have 1 in the hundreds column, then we would have 5 in the tens column, and then we'd have 3 in the ones column, all right? So now, if we wanted to model 10 more, we would simply just find the tens column, which is right here, here's the tens column, and we would just add an additional dot in the tens column, so 10 more would now, we could see that we still have 1 in the hundreds column. But now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the tens column. And then we still have 3 in the ones column. So 10 more would be 163. If we wanted to model 10 less, we would just take away one of those dots in the tens column, or we could take another ten less, and then we could take off another dot in the tens column. So if we wanted to do, in this case, ten less, then another ten less, we could see that we would now have 143. If we wanted to model a hundred more, that would mean we would add a dot in the hundreds column, and now we would have 243. So the idea being, teachers and parents, if you're helping your kids at home, is the idea of we're using this place value chart, and to relate 10 more or 10 less or 100 more or 100 less means we're going to add a dot in one of these columns or subtract a dot in one of these columns. Of course, students aren't going to do this forever. They're going to be able to do it in their head. They're not going to need to explicitly draw this out, but this is their frame of reference. Let's get going on this. So here it says complete each more or less statement. So we have 10 more than 222. So the idea would be we don't want necessarily for students to think of or have to literally draw this out. But here's their hundreds column, here's the tens column, here's the ones column. And we could start off by modeling 222. And then 10 more would mean we would simply add one additional dot to the tens column. So we could see that 10 more is 232. Uh, question B, 100 more than 222. Well, in that case, instead of having this extra dot here, so now we're back to the 222, uh, now we want 100 more than 222. That would mean we'd add a dot here in the hundreds column. So now we have 322. Now, of course, teachers and parents if the students don't need to explicitly draw this out, and they could do it in their head, really that's the point. So they don't need to show their work using these place value charts. Let them go ahead and just mentally do this math up here. If they struggle, however, point out this place value chart and that they can use this as a scaffold if necessary. So 10 less than 222 would mean we'd remove one from that column and we'd get 212, and 100 less would be 122. 
Now here, we're going to go straight to numbers. And the idea is by this point, students are no longer relying on that place value chart. Instead, they're going to be looking for patterns. So we can see here, to go from here to here, is we're adding by 10. So the pattern, in this case, is we're always adding by 10. So if we add by 10, that's going to give us 300. Now on this one, I'm thinking students might need a place value chart to recognize that when you add another 10, that's going to give you 10 dots in the tens column, which can then be exchanged for one dot in the hundreds column. So you might need to explicitly show that with a place value chart, but uh, hopefully students will, you know, get there without the place value chart. We're going to add another 10, and then that gives us 310. Going to add another 10. We're always adding by 10, and that gives us 320. And here's the confirmation that we did everything right, because when we add another 10, sure enough, 320 plus 10 gives us 330. So this is kind of right here. This is kind of like the answer key that proves that everything we did was correct. Oh, let's skip down to, oh, problem C. Let's do this one. So going from 643 to 543 means we've gone down by 100. We've lost a dot in the 100s column. So that means that's our pattern. We're always going to go down by 100. Always down by 100. Down by 100. Down by 100. So in doing that, 543, 543 minus 100 gives us 443. 443 minus another 100, so we keep losing a dot in the hundreds column, gives us 343, then 243, and here's our kicker. We know we did it right because 243 minus 100 gives us 143. Woohoo! I think that's enough for this slide. Um, teachers, uh, obviously, make sure the students are understanding this as they go. And the idea would be we want them to have a, this deep number sense on what's going on here. We do not want them to just resort straight to an algorithm uh, because that would might be meaningless to the students. We really want them to develop number sense as they're doing this, which means they could do this in their head if, if they want. Uh, however, you would use the place value chart as scaffolding as necessary. Let's move on. So this one is unique to Common Core. I would say very few parents and teachers have seen this um, from uh, their own educational experience. This, they're calling this the arrow method, and this is just a way to notate the mental math that the students are doing. Uh, ultimately, this sort of mathematics is not going to be like a, a prerequisite for algebra or anything. This is just a temporary milestone st or a stepping stone as we move towards fluency in um, developing that number sense and developing that standard algorithm. So don't get too caught up or freaked out by this, but it's a nice way to help students uh, show what they're thinking mentally. So let's do this first one, and what they're saying here is take two, 235 and add by 10. So on my previous slide, I did these little arcs. Now they're just kind of doing an arrow. So this is called the arrow method, and that's 245. And now we've got adding by 100. All right, so 245 add by 100 gives us 345. And so that's what they're talking about in terms of the arrow method. Let's do another one over here. So 391 minus 100 gives us 291 minus a 10. So that means we're going to lose a dot in the, in the tens column. So that's going to give us 281. And then this last one on this slide, we start with 417, and it says to subtract 10, so we're going to lose a dot in the tens column. 
So that means we're going to have 407. But now here's the sneaky thing here. They don't tell us. They don't tell us what we're supposed to subtract out here. So we're going to do a little bit of back, working backwards here. Well, we know we're going to have to subtract by 100 to get to 297. So if we're going to have to subtract by 100 to get to 297, that means we started out at 397, which is how we can then subtract by 100 and get to 297. So what are we going to have to do to go from 407 to 397? We're going to subtract by 10. Boy, that was a doozy. That's really sneaky. That's kind of like algebra right there. So teachers, parents, you can point out to your students that as second graders, they're doing algebra. And our last slide for this video, solve using the arrow way. Well, that's what we were just practicing on the previous slide. So we're going to start with 376. And we know that we need to add 103. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add by 100. Well, that gives us 476. And now we can add by 3, or we could add by 1, add by 1, add by 1. But at this point, I think we could just add 3. And that gives us 479. So the answer is 479 adding the arrow way. Now, teachers, why would we want students to do this instead of just learning the standard algorithm of, oh, stacking the numbers up like 376 and then add 103? Well, because this arrow method is guiding our students towards mental math, which is absolutely required to really ensure that students have number sense and fluency rather than just a rote memorization of the algorithm. So here, in general, when students are doing mental math, they add from the largest um, place value to the smallest place value. Whereas when we teach the standard algorithm, we do the exact opposite of what is human nature. We generally teach them to start with the smaller ones and work their way to the bigger place value. That is actually opposite of what the um, awesome mental math people uh, know how to do, uh, or uh, the way they do it. Because the way they do it, and the mental math people, uh, the people who are really good at mental math, they start with the largest place values. So that's what this arrow method is for, is we're really guiding students towards understanding place value, guiding them towards um, number sense. So let's do this one. So this one's down here, says start at 290, and then we have to work our way to 400. So let's start with 290. And we need to guide ourselves all the way up to a 400. Boy, there's a bunch of different ways that students can solve this one. But let's, I'll show one. Let's start by adding, 100, uh, adding 10. So in this case, it's 300. And now I will add by 100. And that gives us to 400. So what did we have to add in order to get 290 up to 400, we had to add 100 and 10. And so the answer is 110. Now another way we could have solved this problem is we could have said, well, let's start with 290, 290, and start by adding 100. That would give us 390. And then we can add 10 more and that would get us to 400. And we can see that we have the exact same answer of 110. So what's really cool about this is this method up here in blue is called making landmark numbers, where we take the 290, we add 10 to get a nice landmark number, 300, it's a nice round number. And then we can compensate from there. In this case, we only had to add 100. Whereas down here, this method is more like just adding from the greatest magnitude to the least magnitude, where we start by adding 100, because we could, and then we couldn't add another 100, so we had to figure out what else we would add by. So some students like this blue method, other students like this red method, and at this point it's totally up to them to decide on what's their preference. 
And that wraps up Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 1, where students are learning 10 more, 10 less, 100 more, 100 less, and they're relating that to these mental techniques for adding and subtracting.